Hey, welcome to unit three in Java. We're going to finally get into methods, parameters, all those important pieces. So this next little part that I'm about to teach you with this particular program in JGrasp, I want you to play over and over and over again this little snippet until you can repeat everything I say. If you can do that, I think you're going to be in a much better shape for the rest of this unit. So it turns out in a lot of code, Java and every other code like C Sharp, um, like Visual Basic, all these different languages, that a lot of times a program is written by, let's say, 30 people. And in our class, we may have Jason in charge of sound effects. So he'll write an entire method on sound effects. And every time our program needs a sound effect, we'll head down to that code and play that sound effect. Now, maybe Zayed is working on the score of the game. And every time someone scores, it would go down and compute that score and maybe display it. Maybe we have our other program programmer in our class. Uh, maybe Mindy would then take that code and she would be in charge of writing um, the aliens that are coming in. She would do the graphics. So think of it, any programming team as lots of people working on it because of that. And also because sometimes we just want to work on a portion of code, we break our code into multiple methods. Now let's look at this. This is our first method demo, our public class with the opening and closing braces right here. And of course, like any others, we have the standard method from here to there, public, static, void, main. And inside of here, we have two method calls. We're going to call two methods that are down below. And let's look at this first one. We're going to call this um, method display name and we put two parentheses. These are going to be empty because we're not passing it anything. Um, you can use any method name as any um, access specifier like we have with all of our other identifier names. Remember, we can usually do a lowercase and do the camel case in the center. So use that same um, layout. When we call display name it, it actually goes to look for another method somewhere in the main outside container class inside of here somewhere that has the same name. So look at this display name. Here's its access specifier down here display name. So it's going to run this portion of code and this could have one line in it or it could have a million lines in it. So what we're saying here is this access specifier is saying, I'm not passing you anything. I just want you to do whatever you're supposed to do down here. And when you're done, come back and keep on going with the next line. So let's hop down here. Let me go through why each of these. This is either going to be public or private based on the scope. Uh, and in other words, um, if we're going to, this is the access specifier that's going to identify whether we can publicly use this anywhere else in this product or it's only going to be used privately so no other method could look at it. This is going to be the access specifier that determines whether it's public. So every other, if I call it from any other method, we could use this. It's not going to be private just to this location. The word static. Okay, so first one, public. Public is our access specifier. Static is going to be um, that our method has been called without an object. We didn't send any variable inside these parentheses down. So it's saying, hey, don't look for anything. Um, we are calling this method without an object being passed down or a variable is another name for an object. This word void, void is the return type. And this means that we're not returning anything out of this method called display name back to the main method. So static means nothing's passed in. Void basically means nothing is passed back. 
Static, once again, we call, it, it shows that the method is, uh, is called without an object. Void is the return type saying, don't expect anything back. So now here we finally have our method name. And because there is nothing in these parentheses, we're saying that there was no data passed from here down into this method. And we, if there was something passed, an object was passed, we call that object inside a parameter. But in this case, there's no parameter because we didn't pass anything. So now that we've called the method, we've come down here, now let's do the method. It's going to come down to our output soon and print Jonathan Livingston. Got it? When it's done, we go back and we it, it's almost like coming back to after the semicolon so it runs the next line. Next, we say display address. So let's look at it again. This is our method, our calling method. Uh, we're passing nothing down as an object. We are identifying that it's public. Again, this is my access specifier to say that it's not private. We can use it throughout anywhere in this class. Static means that again, that the method was called without an object. Void, nothing's getting passed back. And this is the name of the method. It's got to match this one for now. <laughs> and nothing was passed. There were no parameters or objects given to this particular method. So it now prints out 345 Seafarer Way and, of course, Punta Garda, Florida, 33950. Now, we could switch these two lines. I could uh, cut this line and move this down a line and put it right up here. You say, what would it do differently? It would actually print the address first and then the name. If I wanted the address to print a second time, I could put it here again. You can call these methods as many times as you need to. So maybe every time they score, we call and make the score. Every time they, make, they need a sound effect, we pass it on to Jason, he would play the sound effect. So these methods, and the reason again that we use these is to simplify, we don't have all the code inside the main class, it's just thousands and thousands of lines. It's a good way to break up this and then we can call them multiple times. Okay, so let's make sure we know all the right terms. So a method is a programming program module it contains a series of statements it carries out of tasks. So let's go back and look. In our JCRAS program, we actually have three methods. This one is calling the others, so that's one. This one is display name, here's a second, and here's our third method, and they carry out some kind of uh, series of statements. When you execute a method, you call a method, and another word for that is invoke. So let's go back and look. Display address is the calling method. It's calling it or invoking it. And when it goes down there, this is actually down here is our called method. Once we call it, this is the called one. This is where it went or so we invoking, we invoked it by calling a method. So if we look at this like we did, it would do the display address. It would go to that part in the code and then come back and print out system out print line first Java code. So this is a called, we're calling the method, we're invoking it. But as you can see, we're, we, I don't see a method here, so we're going to need one. So the main method executes these automatically and other methods are called as needed. So you could actually have a method in code that you never use, maybe an error method because no one made a mistake. So this is typically, you usually, you could put the methods actually before this or after this. I typically put them after it. I kind of like my main first, but you know what? It doesn't matter where this other method is as long as it's in within your public class as long as it's before this, after this opening and closing curly brace. So a method must always include a method header, also called a declaration. 
and a method body, it's between the, curl, the pair of curly braces. It contains the statements that carry out the work. It's also called an implementation. So let's look at it again. This is where we declared the header. And this actually right down here between these two curly braces is called our method body. So this is our implementation that we did call this method. Come down here and do this and go back with the rest of the code. So let's look at another product here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it easier. This one is we go into the public class. We have our method headers. In other words, this is where the, each of the two methods starts. We have two methods in this program. This is where we invoke the method or call it our method. We're calling it display address. We're going to come down here and print out XYZ Company, 8900 Highway 14, Crystal Lake, Illinois. And these are our method body. And then we pass, we go back up. We now do the line directly after this one. It's now going to print out first job application. So first job application will be the last thing that's printed out in this particular product. Now, soon we're going to get to optional access specifiers. Uh, that access specifier is that public or private. And if we look back uh, one screen here, let me go back to previous here. Notice we did have access specifiers of public or private. So that's an important piece. We can have a return type. We have an identifier. The parentheses might contain data. So far, we haven't set any data in our parentheses yet. Uh, place the entire method within the class that we use it, not within any other method. What that means is in this program, don't put this method inside of the other method. So don't put them inside of each other. So they have to stand alone. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Now let's count how many methods. We have the first method, main. We have a second method that's called display name. A third method called display address. Ooh, we finally have a fourth method. This is displaying name and address. And notice this particular method is going to call display name and display address. So you can have method calls within a method. So you can invoke within another method. It doesn't only has to be invoked in the main method. So let's see what will happen here. First thing that would happen, it would print out calling two methods. Let's look down here and see if that happened. Oh, there it is. I've already executed this, calling two methods. This is a method that's being called or invoked. It's not passing any objects. This is set as public, which is most methods, by the way, which means this class or actually other classes could identify it and use it. So it's that's the access specifier. Static means nothing was passed down. No objects were passed down. Void is nothing's going to be passed back. No return type. And then here is that same name for the method, display name. This says no parameters were passed. So when we come down here, it prints out second Jonathan Livingston. So far, so good. When it's done this method, this brace sends it back. We've already done display name. We now call this method display address. So we come down here once again, same things as before. We're going to print out third and fourth, three, four, five, see fair away, Punta Garda, Florida, 33950. There we go. So we've got all of this printed out. Now, when it comes back, it now goes to this line, system out print line, calling one method. So it's just going to print out calling one method down here. System out print line, there's a big space here, so it's going to put a big gap. That calls two methods. So there we go. That calls two methods. And then the last thing that it's going to call is display name and address. This is going to that fourth method. Comes down here. It is then has a method call within this method. So after display name, it comes back up to this method, prints out Jonathan Livingston. Here, that's what printed out now and then comes back down here 
It then runs the next line, display address. It comes to this method right here. Prints out 345 Safer Away, the address. And after it finished, it does truly go back here, but then the program is over. It does not go back through these methods because they're not called again. Now in both programs I've shown you so far, we used a public access specifier. It means that it could be used by any other class, uh, even though we just have the one. But these are called access modifiers as well. And so access specifier or access modifier. And methods most commonly use the public access. In fact, uh, for example, both of these uh, are access specifiers or modifiers, public and public. And uh, it does say here, the main method in an application must always specify that it's public. But in other methods within that class, like this display address method, it's not required to specify public. However, if access is public, the method can be used by others. So if I don't put this here, then another program I write wouldn't be able to, to use this display address, just so you know. Um, let's see, we already talked about the void. So if we have the word void here, it means it's not returning anything. This is called your return type. So main's not returning anything and display address is not returning anything. We're about to return, so remember that won't stay void forever. And these, um, the method names that we've been using have to be a legal identifier, just to remind you, they have to be a single word, no spaces, and they can't be a Java keyword. So make sure you don't call it, um, for example, a for loop or a while loop. We haven't gotten to those yet, but don't call it anything if it, uh, sounds like it could be used as a coding word. So, and then we got down to the word main. This is the terms main is the name of that method. Uh, main method always executes first when you run a program. So wherever main is, even if that extra method is above it, main still is going to be run first. It's That's the rule. And then if we call that uh, method, then it um, runs at that time. Um, every method header always has that set of parentheses. Right now, nothing has been in them, but soon we'll be able to send data down to that method, so we'll be able to use it there. So um, main method uh, usually always contains string with the square brackets, and args or arguments is traditional but within the parentheses. Typically so far, we've not had any data that we're passing down within those parentheses yet. But let's change that. I'm about to show you a program that's going to have arguments and parameters. You don't have to fight with the code. <laughs> arguments are the data that you have inside the parentheses when you call the method. And when the method has been um, accessed, the what is in the parentheses, what's being received by the method is a parameter. So let me show that next. So now let's look at this code. It's called demo tax method. Notice we actually only have two methods, but wow, a lot of output down here. So let's start at the beginning. So we have this main method. We have two variables. They're of double type, which means they're a decimal. So the first price of an item was $13.82. We're gonna name that price one. And don't forget how a computer works. It looks to the right for assigns the 1382 to price one in memory. And then it assigns $21.53, my next item, as price two. So we have two items in memory at this point. Now, our name of our method is called display tax. This is where we're calling the method. It's going to call this method right down here. But notice, instead of not passing anything down this time, we are passing something down. We're passing, in this case, we call this price one an argument. So price one, we're gonna be passing down 1382. Now, 
when it comes down here, do you see the price? Notice, you see, well, we don't have anything called price. Is that an error? No. This is the argument. We always rename the argument to be a different name that we declare as a parameter. The parameter means the receiving. So I want you to imagine in memory right now, we have price one is 1382, price two is 2153. We pass down the 1382, and now we're basically assigning a third place in memory called price, and it's a double, and now we have a third location of memory. You say, why don't we name these things the same thing? Why isn't the argument variable the same as the parameter variable? That's because if we're all doing separate things in our code, we don't know what, when Jason makes the sound effects, what he's going to name the variable that he's passing down. So that way we don't have to call him and say, hey, Jason, what did you call that variable that you called as an argument? I'm gonna need to have that same variable. No, 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 no. That way, this just assigns whatever valuable was in there to this new variable, always a new variable in the parameter. And here's an easy way to remember it. Argument starts with an A, it's at the beginning of the alphabet. Parameter starts with a P, it's later in the alphabet. So we always declare the argument first, we pass it to the parameter. Now, we have to have this data type, and it's gotta be the data type that this would work with, right? If it's a double and you're passing the argument as a double, it should be a double. Now, look down here. It's now going to assign a fourth variable called rate. And since it's all in capital letters, remember, Java is case sensitive, and it says final. This means it's a constant. We're gonna put in the fourth memory location, 0 0.09, and we can never change this. And it's good to put final, because I don't want them any or anyone else messing with that value. So we now have this tax rate of nine cents, basically. So we're now having a fifth variable called tax, and we're gonna compute tax by multiplying the price. Now let's see where we saw price. Here's price right here, there's the parameter. Remember, it has the value right now, $13.82. So it's gonna multiply 1382 times 0 0.09, that must be the tax rate. So this town or city has a high tax rate of 9%. In Virginia, for example, you know, we have like a 5% tax rate for most things. Exceptions with cars, I think is 3%. But we'd multiply 9% times the price, 1382. And then that would be assigned to tax. And that's a double because the answer I want has pennies. So it's got to be a double. So now the last thing we're going to do is on this time through, the tax on this, let's look down here. The tax on $13.82 is 1.2438. We don't know how to round off yet. <laughs> so it's going to say the tax on this. And do you notice it's okay to put these on two lines? This all could have been on the same line. Let me just do that. We could have put this all on the same line, and it would have been okay. So I want to show you either way of doing that because um, white space doesn't matter in our code. Now, so it prints out this first line. After it finishes that, it's not passing anything back. That's why this is void. We're gonna come back up now. And now we have the second time we're calling the same method. We can call this method 100 times. This is the calling method. This time, we're passing in a different value called price two. And this is why, do you start to see why this has, this argument is price two, this parameter, can't be price two because now it has a new value. So whatever was in price, remember it was 1382, when we pass this down the second time we call display tax, now price is 2153. We're now assigning the rate, it's already assigned because it's a final, so that's okay. We're telling it we're gonna be using this tax, we're gonna recompute. Price is now 2153. We multiply by 0.09 to get 9% of 2053. And then we print this down here. The tax on 2153 is 1.9377. And then it comes back up. We had just finished this line, so we're right here. We do the last method call. So we've had three method calls that are invoked. 
Uh, we've invoked it three times. Now this time, I want to show you this actually is legal. Instead of assigning all these variables, I, I honestly I don't do this very often, so I wouldn't really recommend it, but I want to show you it is legal. Um, now we can just send the 200 number, that's the argument, it's assigned to this parameter. So price is now has its third value of 200. We're going to multiply 200 times 9% and get our last printout. The price, the tax on $200 is 18 bucks. So now you can kind of see how we can do these multiple methods. So now you've seen an argument. It's what's in parentheses that when you call a method is being passed down. Parameter is what's being received. So this is in the called method inside the parentheses. And there's something called implementation hiding or encapsulation. I want you to imagine that very often that the only part of a method that the client sees or which it in which it interacts. So in other words, a lot of times the person who's developing that main method calling everything only needs to know what is the name of the method I need to call and how many arguments is it expecting in its parameter. Sometimes they may not even see all of that. So an example of that would be at a bank, if I'm investing $100 in the stock market and my bank passes over that $100 into the stock exchange program, they don't need to see all of their methods. What all they would need to know is, hey, how do I call that method and how many you know, arguments are you passing over? So a lot of times we don't see where it's being passed. It's encapsulated because it might be private. Uh, we're not allowed to see those pieces. So you should now know what access specifiers are. Let's talk about return types next. So, so far we have, this is a method that's been called, it's called calculate gross. The parameter data type is double because we've sent it a double and the parameter identifier or its variable is ours. Don't forget that should not be the same name as the argument. And we can now come down here and figure it out what your gross pay is. So this calculate, calculate method, calculate gross, determines the method once you pass it a parameter. And don't forget, we have talked in the last two units about a local variable. Um, the, a variable can only be seen within its method. So therefore, that's why we have to pass these over. This method doesn't know how many hours just because you declared it in the main. We have to pass it from argument to parameter for it to understand that. So now let me show you now with a bigger program where we have two methods. We're going to call that method three times. One time I'm going to pass it the argument of 10. One time I'm going to pass it the method of hours, which is 25. One time I'm going to pass it a method of the argument of 37.5. Notice uh, in these two, we've already declared what the argument, they're going to be a double. But this parameter, notice it is called the same thing. I don't recommend that because usually you don't know, but it's technically okay. I don't like this code. I would prefer if they put hours one here, but it's technically okay because this method cannot see this method and because each of these variables is local. So basically it creates a new parameter. It receives a copy of that. So think of this, when I say hours equals 25, it now has a copy of what that is at 25. So um, I prefer it not to be called the same thing, but it's showing here that you could really do that. Um, so, a method can require more than one parameter, so we can send more than one. And if you're going to send more than one, separate the arguments with commas. And when you call this method, the argument set to the method must match the parameter. So if you have three arguments, you have to have three parameters. Uh, so we need those. And that becomes your method signature. It's the method name and all those number types and the order. 
So the first argument matches to the first parameter, the second argument matches to the second parameter, and so forth. So finally, here is some code with more than one. So notice, we now have a method called calculate gross. It has two parameters. So the main or some other method must pass down a double first. It's going to be assigned to ours. The second argument is going to be assigned to this parameter. And notice, you can't just say double hours comma rate. You have to say this is a double and this is a double. We have to have a data type every single time you have a parameter. If you have 10 parameters, you're going to need 10 data types. Remember that because I see always a lot of errors that way. And we can also have a return statement. So we can actually have a variable in that second method and pass a value back to our method. So I'm going to kind of show you what that looks like. So now let's look at this one. Up to now, everything that we've seen was public static void. Well, notice now it says public static double. So this is going to be your return type. So let's think this through. The main has passed it two arguments, the hours and the rate. It's being assigned here as a parameter. But we're declaring right here in this called method that we're going to also now pass something back. And if you're hearing thunder right now, it is thundering. So you can imagine I'm recording this on September 2nd. So yeah, it was thundering a lot that day. So um, what's happening here is we're going to have a local variable called gross. We're going to multiply, let's say you work 10 hours, you make $7.50 an hour, so 10 times $7.50 is $75. Bucks. We're going to pass back gross to maybe this main method in a moment so that if we wanted to print back up in the main or use this back in the main, it would know that value. Any variable like gross that's down here or like hours or rate, these are only local scope variables. No other method can see inside these to use these variables unless you re return it. So be careful that you don't have some kind of uh, unreachable statement, we call dead code. For example, something that will never ever execute. You call a method that doesn't exist or something along those lines. So now let me show you you can only return one value per method. So let's look at this one. We're going to be returning a single double, so in other words, just one value. It's being passed in two arguments that are now called parameters. And within this method called calculate net pay, we have three local variables called gross, withholding, and net. They're all doubles we're going to call another method and pass to it these hours and rate. So you can get, um, it can almost be careful, it can become almost like spaghetti. You have to see where it went. So it's going to go down and pass down this hours and method. And when it comes back, we'll show you in a second with a bigger program, it's going to take that value passed back and assign it to withholding. So it actually created the value that was connected in withholding in this calculate withholding method. It received it back. I'll have to show you this in a second. Now put on your thinking cap and let's put all these together. We have in this program three methods. Got it. In always, the main is called first, so it starts here. It says, in memory, assign measurement to five. Got it. It's going to be an integer. Remember that five is the measurement. Oh my goodness, look at this statement. Lots is going on here. Remember, the computer always sees the right side of the equal sign first. So it comes over here on the right side and says, oh, we're going to be calling a method called get area. Oh good, I've got one. <laughs> And I'm going to be passing this argument down. We don't need a data type here. It's already been declared. It's going to be the value of 5. 
So don't worry about this left side yet, we'll get there. So get area, we come down to our second method. Notice it's public, it's static, but oh my goodness, look at this. It does not say void, it says integer. What that means is now we have a return data type. We're gonna be sending back a value for the first time back into main. We've got to declare its data type right here of what's going to be back. The method is called getArea, and this measurement 5 that we're passing down is going to be assigned as the data type of an integer. We're going to call its parameter variable name down here, side. Now, we go into the method, and it says area equals. Now, don't panic. Even though we called this int area, <laughs> This area that we're doing down here is local just to this, so it would not know this unless it gets passed back. So this local variable area, and if you notice for the first time, we're putting together a declaration statement and doing math, you can combine this. Usually it would say int area semicolon, area equals side times side semicolon, but we're just kind of merging those two statements now that we're getting a little bit better with code. So we're going to take the side, remember the side that was passed down as from measurement to the parameter side is 5. So 5 times 5 is the area. So this return area, now if you say return here, you have to have its data type right there. These two always do it at the same time. As soon as I put this return data type, I always put return down here so I remember I'm going to return something. I told the computer I was. If you don't have a return here and you have int, it, you're going to have errors. And if you don't have a int here and you have return, either way. So now we're going to pass back this 25. Remember, it's 25 right now. And let me show you where it gets passed back. Remember, it just called this method. It always reads the right side of an equal sign first. So basically, when it comes back, get area measurement now has passed back the value of 25. And now we're gonna assign 25 to this area. He said, should we call these things the same thing? You don't have to use the same name, but a lot of times you'll see people call it back the same name just so they just remember that they returned it. So now this is the value that has been passed back and it's gonna be assigned an int. So now the main goes, oh, I've got an area Technically, this area here is a separate memory location than this one because they can't see each other, they're locals. So now it knows area is 25 at this point. Now we have uh, this next, we have a calling method. Don't forget it sees the right side first. Now we have get volume. We're passing down this measurement of five. Nothing's changed with five. 5 is also called side down here. By the way, this parameter wouldn't have to be side. It could be actually another term if you wanted to, but we can call it side. They don't see each other. This um, is separate than this method. So this side's being passed down. Because I have an int here, I must be also passing something back to main from this method. And if I have a data type of integer here, I better have a return. <laughs> And this better be an integer. So we're going to have volume, if you remember from high school, you create volume by multiplying the side three times. So 5 times 5 times 5. So 5 times 20, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125, right? Yeah. And we're going to return that volume. So it's going to come up here. This get volume measurement has a return value. We're going to assign it to volume here. So now, Area is 25, volume is 125. So now when we do these two printout statements, it says a square with a side of, let's look down here, a side of five has the area of 25, and the second one, a cube with a side of five has a volume of 125. You say, Corinne, could I have printed this inside this method? Yeah, I would have need to pass anything back though. So again, you say, well, what's better style? It's up to what you wanna do inside the method where you would print out and whether you need to pass something back. So for example, in the case of my bank statement, if I pass $100 to invest, if 
by this other company that's doing uh, another method for me to invest. Once I sell that investment, it may come back to my bank as a return data type. So it now shows up in my banking account that I have made hopefully a little money off that return.